All right. Good morning, Bullis. Okay, so today's theme for Black History Month is pride. So on behalf of the African American Affinity Group and BSU, we welcome you to our assembly on African American heritage. So to begin, I wanna explain what the term African diaspora means. This is the uh, worldwide collection of communities descended from native Africans or people from Africa predominantly in the Americas, North America, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean. It's the involuntary and voluntary movement of Africans and their descendants to various parts of the world during the modern and pre-modern periods. To understand African American heritage, you have to know our cultural roots, our historic experiences, that have bound us together in diasporic solidarity. The purpose of this assembly, I'm sorry, 12,600,000 African people were kidnapped and brought to the Americas. 46% from West Central Africa, 16% from Benin, another 16% from the Gold Coast or Ghana, Gambia, 12% from Biafra, and 10% from Sierra Leone, the Ivory Coast, Southeast Africa, and Indian Ocean Islands. So the purpose of this assembly today is to show you that we are more than the label black. Black was put into law in the 1600s to signify inferiority and powerlessness. It was used to erase our various nationalities, religions, names, languages, foods, culture. We are descendants of African astronomers, musicians, architects, and mathematicians, and we are proud of our heritage. So today we welcome you to learn about who we are. For it is in the roots, not the branches, that a tree's greatest strength lies. If you know where you're from, it is harder for people to stop you where you are going. I'm Miss Sierra Bullis. My name is Christina, and I'm from the Ethic Tribe in Nigeria. My name is Jade, and I'm from the Yoruba Tribe in Nigeria. And today we're going to talk to you about Nigeria. Nigeria is located in West Africa, and there are over 300 tribes in Nigeria. The three main tribes are the Igbo, the Yoruba, and the Hausa people, and English is our official language. Okay, so now we're going to talk to you about some popular traditional Nigerian foods. There's jollof rice, it's a spicy rice that's made of tomatoes and peppers. And then there's puff puff, which is a common dessert eaten in Nigeria, and it's very similar to donut. And then we have fufu, which is made out of pandian or plantain, and can be eaten with different stews and soups. So here are our heroes of Nigerian heritage. First, we have Tala, the creator, a singer and songwriter. We have Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, the author of Half Yellow Sun and Americana. And finally, we have Giannis Atekungbo, an NBA player that we all know and love. So now we're gonna teach you guys some common phrases in pidgin English that's gonna help you guys on the streets of Lagos. So the first one we have is how on a day or how far now, which means what's up. So when I say how on a day, you're gonna repeat after me, ready? How on a day? How on a day? How far now? How far now? Okay, cool, that just means what's up. So the next one we have is no wahala, and you can use this after any 
uh, phrase or any response, this is a good response to use. So, no wahala. No wahala. That just means no problem. The next one we have is, what's you they chop? You know Nigerians like to eat, so this is a very common phrase you'll hear. So, <laughs> what's you they chop? That just means we'll have you eaten. Finally, when you want to go home, you're ending the conversation, you're going to say, I forgo house. So repeat after me. I forgo house. I forgo house. Very good. Okay. And now we have the beautiful Kenya. Jumbo Bullis. Hello, my name is Giselle. So there are three main tribes out of the 43 plus that Kenya has. The first being the Kikuyu people. They are the largest tribe and played a ginormous part in Kenyan independence. The Maasai tribe is one of the warrior tribes and the keepers of our wildlife. And I'm sure you all know that most of like the greatest long distance runners in history have come from Kenya and they all stem from the Kalenjin tribe, which is also the tribe that the current president of Kenya belongs to. So Kenya has a range of different topographies and environments from like beautiful mountain ranges to valleys and plains to beaches and coastal reefs and the amazing urban city of the capital, Nairobi. The three main dishes of Kenya is chapati, ugali, and mandazi. Chapati is eaten with a beef stew, ugali is like fufu, and mandazi is like a sweet bread that you drink with tea. And then Eliud Kipchoge is the world's greatest marathon runner. Lupita Nyong'o, which I'm sure you all know from Black Panther 1 and 2. And then Wangari Maathai, who's an environmentalist and was the first African woman to win a Nobel Peace Prize. Next we'll have the Congo! <laughs> yo, yo, yo! <laughs> My name is Chris Tangelo and I'm a proud Congolese. Congo is located in the middle of Africa, basically the central, and my family originated from Kinshasa. In Congo, there's a population of 99 million people, and we speak four different languages, French, Lingala, Swahili, <sighs> uh, nah, free that. Uh. And in Congo, we have four major ethnic groups. We got the Bantu, the Sudanese, the Pygmy, and the Nanalotek. In Congo, there are four traditional foods. The Pondu is like a soup you can eat with rice, chicken, and beans and the fufu, you can use fufu and pondu at the same time for like sauce and makemba, plantains, shakwong. It's like fufu, you can use pondu, stews. And yeah. <clears throat> my great uncle Papa Wimba was a very famous religious singer. And my mom told me when her grandfather died, they weren't getting money anymore. So my great uncle decided to start making music so they can have money for food, clothes, and water. All right, all right, we Now introducing Jamaica! Wagwan Bullis, we are proud Jamaicans. Jamaica is an island in the Caribbean with 14 parishes, cities such as Kingston, Ocho Rios, Montego Bay, Negril, Portmore, and many more. One of the most important parts about Jamaica's culture is their food. My parents actually do run their own side catering business known as Miss Nezzy's Jamaican Cuisine, where they sell a lot of traditional Jamaican foods like you see on the screen, jerk chicken, Atkins saltfish, and oxtail. Jerk chicken is pretty much just grilled chicken with a blend of different spices. Aki and saltfish is known as Jamaica's national dish, and it's commonly eaten for breakfast. The yellow stuff that you see is the aki, and the saltfish is just codfish, and everything else is just different seasonings. Um, fun fact, aki is actually poisonous if you do eat it raw, so if you ever go to Jamaica and see an aki tree, don't eat it. <laughs> um, and lastly, we have oxtail, which is pretty much just cow's tail, but it doesn't taste any different from your average meat. 
And if any of you are interested in trying authentic Jamaican food, make sure to go follow the Smiths on Instagram. So next we have music and we'll be highlighting reggae. Reggae is one of the most widely recognized genres and originated in the 1950s. It was influenced by jazz, rhythm and blues and uses various instruments. It was made popular by one of the most popular Jamaican art artists, Bob Marley. We have other music besides reggae though. Our, our songs can be slower and vibey or fast paced and lively for parties. Okay guys, so next we have some Jamaican phrases in our country's dialect. Um, our main, thank <laughs> Our main language is English, but it's like broken bits and pieces of it, also known as Patois. So the first phrase we have is Wagwan, and that just means what's up. So you have to repeat after me. Wagwan. Wagwan. Okay, so the next phrase is how you respond to Wagwan. And it's everything Chris, everything Ari. And that just means like I'm fine, I'm here, and I'm living. So you have to repeat after me. Everything Chris. Everything Chris. Everything Ari. Everything Ari. Okay, so the next phrase is what you say, and that just means like what did you say? It's very straightforward. And the last is brethren and sistren. And that just means like friend or if you see your associate. So brethren, brethren, sistren, sistren. So last but not least, we're going to combine the first and the last. And you're going to say wagwan brethren or wagwan sistren. So repeat after me wagwan brethren, wagwan brethren, wagwan sistren, wagwan sistren. Okay, so these are our heroes with Jamaican heritage. First, we have Queen Annie of the Maroons, who's on the $500 bill. Um, she led the Maroons against the British in the First Maroon War and was declared a national hero in 1975. Next, we have Marcus Garvey, who was the founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, and his beliefs were the foundation of the Pan-African movement. We have Naomi Campbell, who is a British supermodel with Afro-Jamaican and Chinese-Jamaican heritage. Usain Bolt, who is an eight-time Olympic gold medalist and known as the fastest man alive. And finally, we have Kamala Harris, who is the first African-American female vice president in the United States, and her father is from Jamaica. Next up, Trinidad and Tobago. Wam Bullis, I'm Sophia, and my dad's family is from Trinidad. I'm Ava, and my mom's side is Trini, so both my grandparents grew up there. I'm Giselle, my mom's side of the family is Bajan and Trini. So we're going to talk about where it's located. It's located in the Caribbean, right off the coast of South America, and it has a tropical climate with many rainforests. The official language is English, but the most commonly used language is Trinidadian Creole. Next, we have some traditional foods. So on the left-hand side is doubles, which is like a doughy sandwich with curry chickpeas inside. So if you like spicy food, I would definitely recommend. And it's also the most popular street food. And then in the middle, there's paylao, which is a rice dish with meat, vegetables, and it's cooked in coconut milk. And then lastly, there's bacon shark, which is just fried shark inside of coconut bread. So now we have Calypso music. It's an Afro-Caribbean music genre that originated from Trinidad. It has rhythmic, voice, rhythmic and harmonic vocals, and it uses steel drums that also originated from Trinidad. And fun fact, my dad used to play them when he was a kid. Okay, so now we have our famous Trinis. The first is Nicki Minaj, who is a famous rapper. Our second is Michelle Antoine, who is a neuroscientist who specializes in autism and children. And our last one is Winston Duke, who is an actor famous for the Black Panther movies. So now we have some common Trini phrases. So the first one is, when we alignment, which just means like, when are we gonna hang out? So repeat after me, when we alignment. When we alignment. Next we have, what's the scene, which means, what's up? So repeat after me, what's the scene? What's, what's the, the scene? scene? And lastly we have, wham, which means, what happens? So repeat after me, wham. Wham. And now, introducing Afro-Latinos. Get okay, bullies. My name is Donovan. Hi, my name is Skyler. Bon dia, my name is Cam. And we are the Afro-Latinos. So, 
I'm a proud Afro-Cuban and today I'm going to share some significant things about my culture. Um, some demographics about Cuba is it has a population of 62% black people. So how have Africans influenced Cuba? So there's a term that was coined in the 1920s and it's called Afro-Cubanism and it was centered to promote the arts like poetry, music, and dancing in Cuba. So here are some famous Afro-Latinos. Um, number one, we have Celia Cruz. She's a famous artist, singer, and she's known as the Queen of Salsa. Second, we have Soledad O'Brien, and she's a broadcast. She's a broadcaster and journalist. And then we have Sammy Davis Jr. He's an entertainer and activist. Next, we have Dominican Republic. So the Dominican Republic is located in the Caribbean and it shares the island Hispaniola with Haitianos. So the first inhabitants of the Dominican Republic were the Taino people and they were invaded by the Spaniards and that's when the Spaniards brought over African people and that's why we have such a beautiful diversity in the Dominican Republic. So most of Dominican, the Dominican culture stems from a cluster of Spaniard Spaniard culture, African culture, and Taino culture. And when you put all that together, we get stuff like merengue, salsa, bachata, and all those different types of dances. And lastly, diversity is one of the biggest things, biggest factors of the Dominican Republic because we see so many different tones and skin colors and just so many different types of people in the Dominican Republic, and that's something very special to us. So some Dominicans, Famous Dominicans that we have first is Zoe Saldana, who's an actress, and she's best known for her newest movie, Avatar 2. And secondly, we have Brent Fires, and he's a singer-songwriter. His father's Dominican, and his mother is African-American. And lastly, we have Yolanda Guzman, who's an activist for Afro-Latinos. And back when Rafael Trujillo was a dictator, she fought against him and fought for all the young Afro-Latino men and women and children. Thank you. And now we have Brazil. Um, I'm Cam, and I'm Afro-Brazilian. And Brazil has a population of 516 million people. And there's a common stereotype that most Brazilians are white or white passing. But actually, 56% of Brazilians are of African descent. Um, and out of all the countries in the Americas, Brazil has the largest population of black people. Um, some influential Afro-Latinas are Thais Araujo, who is a famous actress, and she inspires young black and brown girls all across the country. Um, Mario Franco is a feminist, socialist, and civil rights activist who's made so many changes in Brazil. Um, this is my family, and it's an example of how many different colors and shades that Afro-Brazilians can come in. And my grandparents actually still live in Brazil, but when, we were, when I was younger, they came to America a lot because they wanted to teach me and my, my brothers how to speak Portuguese, which is the dominant language in Brazil. And next we have the African-American. I'm not African because I was born in Africa, but because Africa was born in me. Throughout the African diaspora, our heritage originates from different areas in the USA. Hi, I'm Naomi, and my family is from Georgia and Alabama. Hi, I'm Ian, and my family is from South Carolina. Hi, I'm Alexis, and my family is from Virginia. Soul food. <laughs> Um, the dishes depicted above originated in the Deep South and from home cooking, and they're the product of locally grown community food, and that was shared among everybody. So on the screen, we have black eyed peas, collard greens, which we just call greens, candied yams, which are a sweet potato dish, and then we also have gumbo and a tofe, which were originated in New Orleans, Louisiana. Next, we will share some of our favorite African-American musicians. So this is Sister Rosetta Tharp, the mother of rock and roll. She was known for playing the electric guitar. Next, we have Riley B. King, also known as B.B. King, and he's one of the most influential blues musicians of all time, and he has the nickname the King of Blues. 
This is John Coltrane, and John was known as, <laughs> sorry, John was the most influential jazz musician in the 20th century, and he was one of the guiding forces behind the creation of jazz. And um, this is Donny Hathaway. He was a soul artist that was identified as a soul legend by the Rolling Stones with his popular hit songs, This Christmas, which is very popular today during the holiday season, which you can listen to anywhere around the country. And then this is Mahali Jackson. She was an inspirational gospel singer who spread blues outside of black churches throughout the country. And then lastly, we have Kendrick Lamar, who is one of the most influential artists of our generation and important to black culture because he explores life as a black person in America. He's also one of the, is the first rapper to win a Pulitzer Prize for his songwriting. All these musicians, they have different flows and rhythms, but they came together to form one genre, which we now know as modern day hip hop. Um, and on that note, it was requested that I teach you guys a dance. So if everybody could please stand up for me. Stand up. <laughs> Okay, so today I'm going to be teaching guys how to footwork, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sorry. There's three steps. Um, first, you're going to want to put your foot out like this, <laughs> then in, and then out again. So slowly, so slow, and then you do it to the other side. So slowly it's out, in, out. And then again to the left side, <laughs> out, in, out. Okay, okay. <laughs> if y'all wanna. <laughs> okay, we can take it up a little. No. If you, we can um, speed it up just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna just do it in threes. Okay, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then if you like do it fast with like a rhythm. <laughs> um, so it goes like this. Everybody together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Um, Excellent job. I couldn't do that. <laughs> uh, thank you everybody for joining us in this assembly. And okay. Oh. Eshe pupo, esante sana, gracias, obrigado, medasi pai. Thank you for your attention and your open hearts. We hope you've learned what makes us proud. And when you see us, know that there is more than meets the eye. Have an awesome weekend.